اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین بارئ الخلائق اجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین صلی اللہ وسلم علیک یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ وسلم علیکہ یا نبی اللہ وعلا آل بیتک الطیبین الطاہرین صلی اللہ وسلم علیکہ یا ابا عبداللہ یا ابن رسول اللہ یا رحمت اللہ الواسع و یا باب نجات الامہ یا غریب یا غریب یا مظلوم کربلا ما خواب من تمسک بکم و امین من لجا الیکم فَيَا لَيْتَنَا كُنَّا مَعَكُمْ سَادَتِي فَنَفُوزَ وَاللَّهِ فَوْزًا عَذِيمًا قال الله تبارك وتعالى وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونُ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ اللہم صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد السلام علیکم جمعیا و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We then send our condolences to our 12th and living Imam, Al-Hujja Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and to each and every one of you as we continue our remembrance over the tragedy that befell upon the household of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam. اللہم صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد و عجل فرجہم عظم اللہ جورنا و جورکم بی مصابنا بی عبی عبداللہ علیہ السلام May Allah accept from us our azadari over the first 12 days of this month inshaAllah And we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that we can absorb the teachings that we have learned in the different majalis and in the different gatherings that we have attended so that we can become more Husseini in our lifestyle inshaAllah. As we are continuing our remembrance of Sayyid al-Shuhada, the king of martyrs or the leader of martyrs, uh, I want to spend tonight talking about the concept of martyrdom in Islam, the concept of shahada or istishhad um, and, and how uh, understanding its importance in Islam, understanding how one can attain the, the, the status of being considered a shaheed, um, and then also understanding the maqam of Sayyid al-Shuhada and why he's given the title of Sayyid al-Shuhada and why that's such an important title. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lecture that I hope that inshallah collectively if we listen to the entire thing uh, will will give us certain inspiration and understanding and appreciation of his great status. Without a doubt, one of the the great statuses one can attain in Islam. You know, there are many different uh, titles Allah Azza wa Jal can give a believer. One can be considered a Muslim or a Mu'min, a Muttaqi, someone who has um, trust in God, someone who is patient. But one of the titles Allah Azza wa Jal gives to a very select few people is he gives them the title of being a shaheed, yeah, being a martyr, uh, one who is killed in the way of Allah. This is how we generally understand this title. Um, and it is a title that Allah Azza wa Jal glorifies in the Holy Quran in numerous verses. So we'll just read one for the sake of Barakah from Surah Ali Imran. 
Verses 169 and 170, Allah Azza wa Jal says in, in a series of verses that we're very familiar with. He says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ أَحْسَنْتُمْ He says, do not consider those who are killed in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal to be dead. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ in the رَبِّهِمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ يُرْزَقُونَ I can't tell you the joy it brings when you finish my verses or Allah's verses. Um, but yeah, he says, but they are alive with Allah and they are enjoying the provisions that He provides. فَرِحُونَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهِ They are pleased and excited at what Allah Azza wa Jal gives them min fadli. وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ And they are delighted and awaiting those who will still join them after them. And then Allah says, أَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ أَحْسَنْتُمْ He says, indeed, these shuhada, these people who die in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have nothing to fear and nothing to be sad about. When we come to traditions that talk about the honor of becoming a martyr, uh, we find a very beautiful tradition reported from Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Where he's reported to have said, Fawqa kulli zi birrin birrun. He says, with every act of piety, there is an act of piety that is greater than it. Yeah, so you can do something, but there's probably something that you can do that's better. And this is why as believers, we consistently strive. We consistently try to become better because there's always something new that I can attain, a greater status that I can attain. But he says, حَتَّى يُقْتَلُ rajul fi sabili Allah, Except when a person dies in the way of Allah, or rather a person is killed in the way of Allah. فَإِذَا قُتِلَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَلَيْسَ فَوْقَهُ بِرْرٌ SubhanAllah. But when one dies in the way of Allah, there is no higher piety that they can attain than that position of becoming a shaheed. And so what we find is that this is an amazing status. Yeah, it's an amazing status and it's a status that the shuhada of Karbala understood. Yeah, it is a sh they understood what an honor it is to become a shaheed and you find that they craved this opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have so many examples. For example, when the, when the kafila or the caravan was riding towards Karbala and Imam al Hussein alayhi salam falls asleep and he wakes up and he says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Aliyun al Akbar rides next to him and he asks, they have a conversation and he says that we are marching towards death and he says, Ya Abati. He says, Alasna ala al haqq. Yeah, are we not on haqq? This word haqq will be repeated multiple times today. And the Imam says, Bala. He says, Yes, we are on haqq. And he says, Ya Abati, Ithan la yubali namutu muhiqqeen. Then it doesn't matter if we die on this way. If we are on the path of haqq, then that honor of death in this way is an honor. It's something that we crave. You find Qasim, a young man, yeah, in his early teens maybe, on the day, on the night of Ashura, yeah, when Imam freed the people and then they all gave their allegiance. This young man, this young boy stood and, and was curious yeah, if he would get that opportunity of becoming a shaheed. And Imam salam asks him, Ya Bunayya, kayful mawta indak? Right? How do you find death, my son? To which he replies, Ya Amma, ahla min al -asar. With you, death is sweeter than honey. Yeah? Now these are things that we hear but it's something that one has to understand the great honor of becoming a shaheed and then desiring on top of that to attain this. And we see this very beautifully encapsulated by our fourth Imam salam in the courtyard of Ibn Ziyad when Ibn Ziyad the Mal'un threatens to kill him. It is said the Imam says to him, Abil qatli tuhaddimuni ibn Ziyad. He says, with death you threaten me? As if death is something that we are afraid of. He says, Anna al qatla lana ada wa karamatuna ahsantum as shahada. He says, You have forgotten that death is something that is ordinary for us and martyrdom is considered an honor by us. Yeah? And so, even the threat of death was not something that would deter them. You know, And this is something that comes from, of course, a tremendous amount of faith. A tremendous amount of understanding and trust in the promises given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because 
You know, like what can people threaten you with? They can threaten you with your life, and that's what they consider to be the highest threat. But here, the Imam says, This is death is is not something unusual for us. It is ordinary for us, and karamatuna shahada. At this honor, we have an honor of becoming a shaheed, and so. That tells us, or these verses and these explanations tell us on one hand what an honor it is yeah, for to receive martyrdom. But at the same time, we also understand that this is an honor that is bestowed by Allah to very few people. It's not something that everyone can claim the title of a shaheed. But it's something that is, very res- that is reserved for people who meet certain criteria. And that's what I want to talk about today. Is I want to understand or have us understand the concept of martyrdom. Um, in, in its full context. Um, and its full context is that martyrdom has to be understood within the framework of Islam. Right? Um, and one, if we, and like any concept you take, right? You take a concept of generosity. Islam has its own definition of generosity. Um, and so sometimes we ask, when we look at traditions that says only a believer is generous, and then we ask, but no, I know so many people who give. Well, Islam has a specific context. Right, And so the framework is important. Islam has a specific framework when it comes to things like beauty, sacrifice. And it has a very specific context when it comes to martyrdom. And it's important that we understand this context. Because if we take martyrdom and remove it from the context of the framework of Islam, um, it brings a lot of negative ideas to the head. Right? This is what people have done to us when, when for example, we praise martyrdom and then they say you see Muslims like to kill people and they like to die I saw some of those looks right now yeah because we we didn't realize that we're talking about an entire framework here and the moment we remove from the framework what we do is we ruin the framework we ruin what Islam says but we also ruin the concept itself and we ruin the concept of martyrdom if we are to remove it from the entire Islamic framework. Rather, if we understand the entire framework, then we understand why martyrdom is a, is a gift given to very few people in Islam. right? And there are layers to this and levels to this. And inshallah, we will try our best to explain this within the framework of Islam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So when we talk about martyrdom, so we're saying that we have to understand it within the framework of Islam. I need, this is a bit, uh, I need you all to follow me today, okay? Because we're going to go down a journey and hopefully the conclusion will all be there together. But martyrdom has to be understood within the context of jihad. Yeah. Now, not jihad again, but we have the news tell us what jihad is, right? But we're talking about jihad in the Islamic context, which is struggle. Struggle in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what jihad is. We understand there is a jihad al-akbar and a jihad al-asghar. And jihad al-asghar is the fighting in the way of Allah. Well, jihad al-akbar is the daily struggle that a human being goes through in their life to try to become an upright individual. And so the concept of shahada... Um, or, or, or a shaheed or martyrdom has to be understood within the concept of jihad. And this jihad is the struggle um, in the way of Allah, be it against my desires, jihad against trying to, in trying to become a better believer, or even to that extent of jihad in sacrificing one's life in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But martyrdom has to be understood within this context. Now this will become a lot clearer towards the end of this lecture. But I want you to understand the link that martyrdom has to be linked with jihad, but not just from the fighting perspective. Okay, because like we have to try to empty that out of our heads in today's discussion. That when we talk about these words, if you have already what we have been told what jihad and martyrdom is by non-Muslims, right, or by Muslims who have perverted it, then we won't understand these concepts. But remove the fighting aspect of it. But martyrdom is linked with jihad. Jihad is can can only be valued if we understand the concepts of Amr bil Ma'ruf and Nahi Anil Munkar. Right? Ma'ruf is good, Munkar is evil. And so struggle in the way of Allah can only be actualized when we understand what is good and what is evil. 
follow, right? Good and evil can only be valued if we accept that it comes from a divine source. Yeah. Otherwise, a divine source, that one who is empty of a divine source, that good and evil has no value because that good and evil changes. We see that in our society. Something is good today by being legal, tomorrow it will be illegal. And so good and evil, munkar and ma'roof can only be truly valued if we accept that it comes from a divine source. Divine source or a divine source can only be truly appreciated if we believe in the concept of Tawheed. And Tawheed and the truth that comes from this divine source can only be accepted if we believe in divine messengership, right? And so this is why we said that if, to understand martyrdom, you have to take the entire framework of Islam. You can't just take martyrdom as a concept and say it's a concept that exists. To believe in the martyrdom of Islam, you have to believe in haq, you have to believe in batil, you have to believe in the source of haq and batil, and you have to believe in the messengers that taught us what is haq and batil. Right? And so the concept of martyrdom is something that is linked entirely within the framework of Islam. And it's not something that you and I can pick and choose or even others who do it can pick and choose and say, but look at this concept. But we have to say, no, let's look at it within the entire framework to try to understand what martyrdom is. And so this teaches us, or at least it shows us the importance of taking the entire framework of Islam to try to understand the concept of martyrdom. Now when we look at the concept of martyrdom itself, let's look at the word shaheed, right? A shaheed is something that we would say translated as a martyr, but it comes from the root word shahida, sheen ha dal, shahida, and it has numerous meanings, right? The word shahida has numerous meanings. One meaning it has is to see, right? And so for example, you would say somewhere to someone, shahid, uh, that he shahidar, he shahid al hilal, he saw the moon, for example. And so they saw the moon, that's one meaning of this word shahida. Another meaning of the word shahida is to witness something, right? And so when somebody witnesses something, they give uh, a shahada and they say, I witness this, and then you ask them to provide their witnessing. So shahid here, one meaning is to see, another meaning is to witness, another meaning on top of that is to become to testify, right? And so when someone is testifying to something, they give their shahada. This is why when someone becomes a Muslim, they testify to the oneness of God by reciting the shahada. And so another meaning of the word shaheed is to testify. Another meaning on top of that of the word shaheed is, um, is to bear, is to become a model yeah? or to become an example. So when a person becomes an example, a paradigm, they become a model, they are known as a shaheed as well. So these are the different understandings of the word from the root word shahida. This is again in Arabic not uncommon. You look at the word uh, wali, it has the same dozens of meanings. This is why people translate it differently, right? But you look at the concepts, they have many different meanings. Now, if we were to just open the dictionary and take a lexical meaning of the word shaheed, we've understood the root. Now, let's come to the conjugation, the word shaheed itself. The word shaheed in a lexical sense, that means you open a dictionary, what is a shaheed? One of the first things that will come up with the concept of shaheed is one who witnesses the truth. Yeah, This is really, again, I want us to focus on this word truth, right? is that when one witnesses the truth, they are referred to as being a shaheed. And Allah Azza wa Jal uses this in the Holy Quran in Surah An-Kabut, verse 52, when he says, قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ shahida That say, Allah suffices between you and I as a witness, because who sees the truth clearer than Allah Azza wa Jal? Right? And so the word shaheed in its lexical sense means one who witnesses the truth. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, there is no greater shaheed than me because I am the witness to everything. Things you say, I hear. Things you don't say, I see. Allah Azza wa Jal is that shaheed. Why? يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The verse continues. Because he knows everything that is in the heavens and in the earth. 
So in the lexical sense, when you look at the word shaheed, it means one who witnesses the truth. But let's look at it from that terminological sense, right? The specific sense where we, when we say shaheed, the first thing that comes to our mind is a martyr, right? And so, yes, that is how it's translated, that shaheed is a martyr. But what is the meaning of that word shaheed in a very terminological or specific sense? And so here, I want you to again focus with me. The meaning of shaheed in a terminal, terminological sense is a person who, number one, witnesses and sees the truth. This is the same as the lexical meaning. They witness and they see the truth. So the first thing that a shaheed does is that they are expected to witness and see the truth. Then they verbally attest to that truth. Right? And so they stand in defense of that truth with their kalam. They will try to guide people to the truth. They will try to live by that truth. They will profess to that truth. Number three, they will stand firm with that truth. That means that they will not waver when things become difficult. Right? That when things become hard upon people, a person who witnesses the truth, verbally professes the truth, but they will stand firm in that truth and not only do they stand firm in that truth they are willing to struggle in the establishment of that truth and so they are willing to make their lives uncomfortable to establish the haq that has they have witnessed and that they claim to profess and number five they are people who are also then on top of witnessing verbally declaring standing firm struggling they are also willing to give their lives in establishment of the haq. Yeah? This is that complete definition of what a shaheed is. Right? So let me repeat that. But again, it's important for us to understand. Right? So number one, they are people who witness and see the truth. And they verbally attest to that truth. And then they stand firm with that truth. That means they live their lives with that haq. And they struggle in the establishment of that haq. To that extent where they are willing to give their lives for the sake of that hut. Yeah? That is a person who is considered a shaheed. And when a person meets all five of these criteria, right? Witnessing, verbally declaring, standing firm, struggling in that way, and even willing to die in that sake of that hut, because they have fulfilled the criteria of being a shaheed. In turn, Allah Azza wa Jal makes them a model and a paradigm for all of mankind. Yeah, This is why Allah says that this is one of the meanings of a shaheed we said in the very beginning, is that they are a model. They are a paradigm for all of people to look at and say, my God, that is what I can become in my life. And so when we look at, for example, the verse of the Quran from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 143, Allah Azza wa Jal, this is the verse we read in the in the khutbah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا He says, and thus we have made you an upright or a balanced ummah, a balanced community. Why? لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ So that you will be witnesses or shuhada, or here we can understand it as being, so that you can be a model for all of mankind. You understand? This ummatun wasata is not someone who just who just walks that middle path. Walking that middle path in itself is very tough. Look at all the rights and the lefts we have today, right? To find that middle path is tough. To stay firm on that path is tough. To verbally declare it is tough, right? And to struggle in, in, in living that is tough and willing to die in that way. Even that is tough. That is the ummatan wasata. And so Allah Azza wa Jal says, we have made you an ummatan wasata. And when you can meet the criteria of living that upright life as an ummah that is struggling or striving to be in that middle path, you will become a model for all of people to look at. لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونُوا الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ shahida. Subhanallah. And above you as a model, Allah says, is the greatest model. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And hence the Prophet is the greatest shaheed. Right? Here in that, not just lexical definition. 
we're talking about in a terminological definition, yeah, in that specific sense of a martyr. Why? Because a martyr becomes a shaheed. Yeah, a martyr is a shaheed, they become a model from becoming a shaheed. And hence Allah Azza wa Jal says, there is no greater model than the Prophet who struggled in the establishment of Haq so that we can follow Haq, who was willing to sacrifice his life in the establishment of Haq. And he sacrificed his entire family for that Haq. And therefore the greatest shaheed then is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So the main point, right, or the key word, rather, that we have emphasized in this entire discussion so far that I said is really important for us to understand is that of haq, yeah, truth. This is very important, right, that for one to become a shaheed, one has to again witness the truth, they have to declare the truth, they have to stand firm with that truth, they have to struggle in remaining firm in that truth, and they may be willing to give their lives for the sake of the truth. The goal, right, the motive, the purpose um, is the establishment of haq, right? And in the process of establishing haq, in the process of establishing the truth, they will be considered a mujahid in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? One who struggles in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why if you recall when we started breaking down the framework, we said the concept of martyrdom has to be understood in the concept of jihad, right? Because one cannot be a martyr without first and foremost becoming a mujahid in the way of truth. Yeah, One who struggles in the way of truth. This is a point that I think is really important for us to understand. This is why we said that this title is not given to everyone, right? But a true shaheed haqqan is one who is willing to see the truth, accept the truth, struggle with the struggle with the truth and establish the truth, right? And because they are the ones who are constantly struggling with the truth, they are known as a mujahid. A mujahid is who? One who struggles for the truth, right? And therefore a person may be a mujahid, a one who struggles for the truth, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to die to become a shaheed, rather because they have struggled for the truth in the eyes of God, they are already shuhada. Yeah, they are already martyrs, and this is something that I need us to understand when we talk about the framework. Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam wa Ali Muhammad is reported to have said, Inna al Mujahida nafsahu ala ta'atillah. وَعَنْ مَعْسِيَةِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ بِمَنْزِلَةِ بَرَّ الشَّهِيد yeah? He says one who struggles with his lower self, yani the soul, his nafs, in the obedience of Allah, one who struggles with himself or herself in the obedience of Allah and against disobedience to him has the status of a virtuous martyr in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Subhanallah, one does not have to die to become a shaheed. And this is why I said that this concept is so important. But rather, one has to struggle and be consistent in that struggle to become a shaheed. And so what we see is that from the framework or the Islamic framework, jihad and martyrdom are linked together in the struggle for haq, yeah? in the struggle for truth. And that one cannot be a martyr if they are a person who did not struggle for the truth. Yeah? This is again something that we have to also understand. Yeah? That one cannot be considered a martyr unless they struggle for the truth. Some people are very lucky that they just woke up, decided to stand for haq and became martyrs. Yeah? It doesn't mean an entire lifetime, right? You see what happened in Iraq, for example, yeah, when Daesh was attacking and, and, and people stood up in defense. We don't look at the past of the people and say, no, but look at the... No, the fact that they decided to rise and become examples and struggle in the way of truth, they are given the title of being a shaheed, right? Because they woke up for that truth. 
And so here again, this point is really important for us in the general sense to understand that one cannot become a martyr if they did not participate in the struggle for truth, right? And this is why the establishment of truth was so important to Imam al Hussein. right? When you look at the words of him, when he, for example, said to uh, Walid bin Utba that Yazid is a rajulun fasiq, sharib al khamr, ya mu'linun bil fisq, wa mithli, la yubaya mithla. The people like me do not give allegiance to people like him. We generally stop there, but the very next sentence or the uh, uh, the next passage, what does he say? فَمَنْ قَبِلَنِي بِقَبُولِ الْحَقِّ yeah? He says, whoever accepts me in truth should know فَاللَّهُ أَوْلَى بِالْحَقِّ That Allah is the source of truth. Yeah? That means you cannot join me yeah, in the struggle for truth unless you first and foremost accept that Allah is truth. Right? And this is where we see the difference between the side of Hussein and the side of Yazid. Right? They never understood that Imam al Hussein was not rising for Hussein. Imam al Hussein was rising for the establishment of haq that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because they failed to recognize that, they failed to recognize the haq with Hussein. Right? And I think this is where you and I also can take a very really important lesson, you know. That when the twelfth Imam comes, yes, we will have different variations and people will accept and people will not. If we don't know Haq, we will not appreciate the message coming from our twelfth Imam. You understand? If we have not established Haq in our hearts and understand what God expects and follow through with God expects and struggle with what God expects, to that extent where my God, I'm willing to sacrifice fun and entertainment for what God expects. This is part of laying down your lives for what God expects, right? If I'm not willing to do that now, I will not recognize haq when haq comes to my face. Yeah, I will be one of the deniers because haq will become convoluted for me. I won't know. But if I can establish haq in my life and follow and struggle with the haq that God has presented, then it becomes easier for me to accept that haq that will come from our Imam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And so we to wrap up, it's uh, I repeat these points again. One does not need to die in the way of Allah to be considered a martyr. Right? One just has to be an establisher of haq, a follower of haq, a person who is committed to be on the path of haq. For them to be considered a martyr. But then, right, there are a select few who stand for the truth, verbally declare the truth, struggle to, to be on that truth and to bring people to that truth. But then they are also blessed with giving their lives for the truth. Yeah, that's person who meets all the other criteria that we said. But they have one greater honor where they actually give their lives for haq. Yeah? And such people, you know, after all that struggle and after all that sacrifice to still give the last bit of them for the establishment of haq, they have an honor that is only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? An honor that is only known by God. You know, one of the beautiful hadith we get is when Imam Hussein alayhi salam went to the cover of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. And he tells us that the Prophet came to his dream and spoke to him. But then the Prophet says something there. He says to Imam, Wa inna laka fil jannati darajatin la tanaluha illa bis shahada. He says, Hussein, there is a place that is reserved for you in paradise. We don't know what the status is. We don't know what that place is. But he says it cannot be reached except through your shahadat. Yeah? Except through your martyrdom. There is a place that people who struggle, they do all of these things, but then they also lay down their lives. There is an honor that is reserved for them that cannot be duplicated with any other honor. And it is a status that Allah Azza wa Jal only gives to a select few. And the greater the struggle of that person, the greater 
of a role model that person becomes. Yeah? Understand these final points. The greater the struggle that they established, the greater the role model that becomes. And this is why Hussein is eternal. Yeah? Because when you look at the struggle of Aba Abdullah salam, there has never been a struggle like the struggle of Aba Abdullah. When you look at the sacrifices of Aba Abdullah, there have never been those type of sacrifices. And when you look at the way he gave his life, there has never been someone who has given their lives the way Hussein gave his life. That is why Hussein is not just a shaheed, Hussein is Sayyid al-Shuhada. Yeah? That he is not just a shaheed, but he is the king of shuhada. Yeah? Because of the role model that he was and the struggle that he endured. I hope we understand this concept and appreciate it and understand it that when people mislabel this concept, we have the knowledge to understand and provide them that what truly is a shaheed in Islam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We are now in that second half of the musibah. It is that musibah that when we look at our traditions, wallah, it is a musibah that broke the heart of the Ahlul Bayt even more than the Shahadat of Hussein. To see women from the household of Rasulullah, to see children <laughs> from the household of Rasulullah in chains without hijab being whipped for what? For crying for their love. This is something that when our fourth Imam alayhi salam would cry, <laughs> he would recall these moments when he would be asked, Ya ibn Rasulillah, ma hadha al-buka? That why do you cry in this way? He says, by God, every time I see my aunt Zainab, <laughs> I remember the musibah that she endured in Karbala and after Karbala. You know, for me, one of the greatest nights of difficulty must have been the night of Shami Gharibah. Imagine having your loved ones dead in front of you, having no water, having no shelter, having no one to protect you. I wonder how the mothers and the sisters gathered on that night. But there's a part of me that tells me as well, that when the mothers gathered and the sisters gathered, they knew that this day would happen. Zainab knew Abbas would go and not return. <laughs> Zainab knew Hussein would go and not return. Umm Kulthum knew Ali ibn al-Akbar would go and not return. But there was one lady that my heart breaks for and that is Rabab, <laughs> who on that night of sham e must not have had any idea that my six-month-old Ali ibn al asghar will go and not come. We send condolences and we pray for the heart of Rabab to say that stay strong. For little do we know that in a few weeks after you will lose another daughter by the name of Saki. It is said that Umar ibn Sa'd on the next day gave orders for the women and children to be captured. He had the women sit on the back of camels without any cushions or drapes and their faces remained exposed for all to see. And then he made them march through the battleground. You know, we are told, my brothers and sisters, that part of the adab, part of the morality of battle is that when you take prisoners, you do not let them see their dead ones. But these malu'oneen took Zainab through the battleground, took Sakina through those battlegrounds, where they saw their loved ones in that manner. We are told by our fourth Imam when he was asked that how were you taken from Karbala to Kufa and Kufa to Shah? He says the head of my father was raised on a standard and the guards were behind us and to our side. And he says every time we cried they would hit us with these. 
He says this continued from Karbala to Kufa and Kufa to Sham when they finally entered the gates of Sham. It is said the head of Hussein was brought to Ibn Ziyad. <laughs> it is said it was placed in front of him. And what does this Mal'oon do? He begins to strike the teeth of Hussein with a cake. <laughs> ah, we say, may patience be upon Zainab and Sakina. And this Mal'oon says what? He said, Laqad asra ashaybu ilayka ya Abu Abdullah. How quickly you became old, O oh Hussein. That is when, when there was commotion in the, in the courtyard. Zainab alayhi salam raised a finger and silenced everyone. And then Zainab began to deliver a sermon in which she reminded the Kufans of the words and the lahja of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. فَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَيَمُنْ قَلَبِي يَنْقَلِبُونَ وَالْآقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the return of our Imam to forgive the sins of our parents and loved ones that those who are going through difficulty, that he end their difficulty. Those that have asked us to remember them, Ya Allah, accept their hajat. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiul alim wa tub alayna inna kanta tawabur rahim. Mata mi Hussain. Ya Hussain.